I remember us growing up now, it's going to be a lot different to how the kids grow up now. Uh, it was playing football, riding your bike, and going all over the gaff to like you end up in all sorts. My mum, she's, she's my hero. Like she, she knew what she was doing and what she wanted for her her, her son. I started Fresh Ego Kid, basically there at Shrewsbury. It was an idea when I was at Order Shop, and I had this little note pad. It's on the on the on the bus at um, Coach at, at Order Shop all the time, saying to lads, "Look, listen, I'm gonna start a clothing brand, you know." What? Well, I'm not gonna wear your clothes. What are you going on about? And a lot of it was banter. None of it was kind of kind of like vicious to be like people hating or anything like that. I feel like if someone said, like, I'm gonna make bikes, you'd be like, you gonna make a bike? What are you gonna make a bike for? You know what I mean? It was more of that kind of like that, like it's, it's, it's not the norm, you know what I mean? So if you think about today, like if someone said they wanted to do something, you'd be like, like, sky's the limit. Anyone could do anything these days, you know what I mean? So. But yeah, on the coach it was an idea, I had a notepad, had ideas for logos and like that's how I kind of felt filled my time. And then going to Shrewsbury, I got the I got the maddest story that I find still crazy today. I knew nothing about websites, nothing about like anything to do with digital. Knew nothing. And I remember when I said to my best mate Ben, I was like, Ben, I need to try and figure out how I'm going to do a website. So we found this um, kind of like how to find a website, like how, how to, like, so, so you put it in, you put your, what you wanted, fashion, location, and stuff like that, when you wanted to start it. And I remember I went to Shrewsbury to do the interview with Graham um, Turner and as I left the club, I had an, I got a phone call, and the phone call was a Shrewsbury number, and I thought it was a club, but it was someone. It was like a search engine for the website, and they were like, "Hi, this is Marvin Morgan." I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "Oh, have I left something?" And they're like, "What are you going on about?" I was like, well, "Who's this?" "Oh, yeah, it's 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 Drew from websites R Us, like however the company was called." I was like, "Where are you based?" Shrewsbury. I was like, nah, 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 this is, you can't be serious. It's like, yeah, we're based in Shrewsbury. So I said, let me get this right. You are a website developer that's based in Shrewsbury and I put my name into this whole thing and you rang me. And they were like, he was like, yeah. I go, it's fate. Listen, hold your voices. Guess what? I'm signing for Shrewsbury. <laughs> yeah, I've just signed for Shrewsbury Town. I'm going to be here for the next two years. So, boom. And then that's that's how it started, really. Like it was it was a crazy thing to like come out of nowhere. Like it, as I said, I knew nothing. I went to, I went to the company, sat down with the guy, and I was just like, "Look, bro." The details in putting garments together is not so easy as people think. You know what I mean? To even down to your fit, even down to your stitching on the hems like raised rubber, like we're making it like, this is, this was great for us. Now we're going to change our raised rubber to something else. You know what I mean? And continually developing your product. Remember, people buy clothes and say, you know what, I want to buy a t-shirt. I want to buy a hoodie. I want to buy shorts. People, we buy clothes. It just depends what clothes and what brands we buy. So we want to keep developing the product, the logos and like the colorways, the, the fits this is what's about the game, you know what I mean? I feel like people get too caught up sometimes and try to be too cool, you know what I mean? But actually, you need to feel about the structure of a tracksuit. So, this structure, to put this together, there's so many samples and getting the colors right. As I said, um, YKKK zips, um, like stuff like this. Like, you don't on the tips of, of a draw cord, you know what I mean? There's so many details to product development and this is what we're living now to understanding how do we de develop the brand that starts from here, that goes to here and then also competes with Nike, Adidas, Puma. Fashion's been in me, it's 
it's been quite a mad, like my my nan, and my mum said this to me, it's quite sweet. My nan was a dressmaker in Jamaica. And then when she moved from Jamaica to um, Rinwash to Manchester, she's one of the best dressmakers in Manchester at the time. And then my, my dad owned his own brand called Uzi. And it sounds, yeah, it's a bit violent, isn't it? <laughs> but it was like the ragger culture. So it was really baggy. It was really kind of like that whole ragger muffin kind of phase. And, but he, he was different to me. He was a um, sewing machine, so he could put a garment together when I probably couldn't put a garment together if you gave me a sewing machine, you know what I mean? But visually, I'm like, this is visually how I think it's cool. That's what it's meant to be. So if you look at this collection, it's all about colour, you know what I mean? This is what we're saying. The collection's about colour. It's about obviously making you feel good. So like fashion's actually been in me by not knowing it subconsciously, going into my nans and seeing all of the dresses and the sewing machines and going to my dad's and his workshop. And then effectively being into fashion and being a founder of a fashion brand and trying to compete is where we're at now, you know what I mean? As I said, every footballer thinks they're cool. Like, Fresh Ego Kid is, a, is, is me, but also the football culture, you know what I mean? Of, a fresh ego kid. Like everyone's fresh in football. If you look at all of the haircuts and people wear aftershave to go and kick ball with you know? <laughs> I think Troy Deeney says something like about um what's his name? Oh god. Who was it? Virgil. Virgil, yeah, Van Dyke goes, listen, he smells sexy. <laughs> and that's my point. Every footballer is fresh. Every footballer, you need an ego. You need an ego to compete with your teammates and the opposition team. You know what I mean? You could be having a battle with somebody and you, you need your ego to get you through games. You know what I'm saying? And then when people are celebrating, it's all of the, that, look at all of the, like Jesse doing all of that. And you got Deli doing his thing. You got Ronaldo when he jumps up and do it like, so like if you think about the kids these days, that's what they're buying into. You know what I mean? They're buying into the football boots, they're buying into the celebrations, they're buying into the haircuts. And deep down, we're all kids, do you know what I mean? We are all kids deep down at heart, do you know what I mean? So that's the perfect of the brand, Fresh Ego Kid. It's good to have the footballers buy in. It helps endorse the brand. And if you think about big sponsorship deals that we're getting big footballers like uh, Abameyang, like uh, Lukaku, a Madison, a Deli, a Sterling. These are the world's biggest footballers in the world and they're promoting wearing our product. It's, it's massive for us and it's, we, all we can do is be grateful for their help. You know what I mean? Now we need to take the brand on more level. And what else can we do? We're doing collaborations with Xbox, Call of Duty, New Era. These are big, big companies. Why are they collaborating with us? Effectively, we're a small brand, we're a small business. So these are things that we've got to feel blessed with. How can we carry on this and grow the, the business and the brand doing these types of things. For us, like headwear is massive, like absolutely massive for the brand. Um, we, this is the reason why we have one of the biggest collaborations in headwear. We were the biggest headwear brand in the world. So like all types of design, like again, if you feel that, if you can see it's nice and furry, like no one's doing this, no one's doing stuff like this. Like we got an exclusive point of basically, now the store's here, what we're gonna be doing is exclusive headwear. So some hats are only gonna be stocked in the shop, you know what I mean? And that's gonna be important for people to come down, check it out, see what's here. Like at the end of the day, there's some headwear that you're never gonna see on the website and you'll never, there might only be one version of this hat and we're gonna sell it, it's gone, it's gone. So for us, headwear is a massive key and obviously a big driver to what we're doing and where we're looking to go. Hence why, as I said, we've got a collaboration with New Era. Like me and John were just like, how the hell we pulled this off? Like, like this is New Era, like. How did you pull it off? <sighs> John, how do we pull it off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So like, it was, it was weird, like people would say to us, how have you pulled off New Era? How have you pulled off Xbox? How have you pulled off Call of Duty? I feel like once we're in a room as owners, 
Like, we've got a lot to talk about. I feel like people collab and invest in people. You know what I mean? So if it's a corporate, that's a massive corporate, someone's gonna be handling the collaboration and gonna buy into something or somebody. You know what I mean? So effectively, we when we pitch, we pitch well. You know what I mean? We know what we got, we know the brand, I believe in my brand, I believe in myself, I believe in my partner, I believe in my staff. Like, I believe in this brand, you know what I mean? And like, obviously as a business, like, you need luck. You need to know where you wanna go and what you wanna do and how you're gonna do it, you know what I mean? So, I believe where we're going, you know what I mean? And again, we're, we were like, what? I think it's our 10th year this year, but effectively, I believe it's, as a business and as a brand going further forward, we're three, four years in, you know what I mean? Because actually now it's game time, it's goal time. This is what we want to do. This is how we want to do it. We've got New Era. We've done collaborations with Xbox. We've done collaborations with um, Call of Duty. We're doing more stuff next season, next year. We've got Fresh Ego FC now. That's going to be a power driver in what we're trying to do. We're giving back to the community. There's loads of stuff that we're trying to put in place to make the business grow, the brand grow, and where we want to go. We want to go into Europe. We've just been, we're 50 door distribution with um, Foot Locker. We're looking to grow that. How are we going to do that? What does that look like? They've given us two orders for this year. It's great for the business and for the brand. Next year, we're working on two big collaborations that I can't really say yet, I can't really say now. But like, these are things, if we pull it off, we're like, how the hell have we done that again? You know what I mean? So these are things that are going to build the brand, but also we've got to understand, you need to build a business. You want to go slowly. You know what I mean? And obviously, if you look at, if you look at, I only look at the big boys in Nike, Adidas and Puma. And these brands have been going for 50 plus years. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, they've done all of this grind that we're going through now. Again, and it's that whole subconscious thing as well. Is like, again, the people that walk past the shop now, the guy that walked past before goes, ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, I know that brand. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, the footballers. You know what I mean? And that's the subconscious thing that we need to try and drive and hopefully the shop does this, you know what I mean? This is this, like a, I'm not saying I wanna have all shops all around London. Yeah, that's a dream, but you gotta be realistic. At the end of the day, where we are now, we live in the internet world. We wanna grow our internet business. We want people to come here, feel welcome. This is a hub, this is a spot. Like, footballers come down, artists come down, launch parties, um, we're gonna be doing the shop talk, podcast talk, stuff like that, that's gonna drive and, Obviously, again, build a community. You want to build a Fresh Ego Kid community. You want to build a Fresh Ego FC community and keep driving that forward and going from there, really, man. With the, with the shop now, how we're going to be doing it is, it's a hub, it's a space. Not so think about, yo, this is a retail store. Come and buy your bits. I would rather say to the fans of the brand, to the people that endorse the brand, that support me, yo, come, come and say hello, come and chill, you know what I mean? We've got a big table, we've got Wi-Fi, we're selling drinks, shisha, you know what I mean? It's going to be more of a vibe than it is going to be sell, 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 sell. This is the space to come down and, and vibe, catch a vibe, but also you can buy a hat, you know what I mean? So, and that's my point of like now changing the game in, I would like to say that a lot of the certain brands will have a, like a hub, a spot, like, and, and, and doing stuff like podcast talks and telling, um, having like a pop-up, like um, activation every month. You know what I mean? It could be anything. So these, these are now what we can do. Branding, isn't it, really? I could, like, when you say brand, brands are so many things. You have brand cars, brand pencils, brand hats, brand trainers. So like, I would like, Focusing the, on the brand element is obviously just being bigger than having, just selling clothes and hats, you know what I mean? We could be selling cars in 20 years time. You I have no idea where it could turn to, you know what I mean? So that's why I always say brand and not a label, like a, or a clothing line, you know what I mean? For, for, for my thing is making sure that you focus on exactly what you want to sell, how you want to sell it, what does it look like? You know what I mean? Like it, you can be inspired by other brands, but don't follow them, don't copy them. Just be inspired and be like, yeah, they've inspired me to do this. Um, 
and that understanding all brands, all companies, all businesses have tough times. You know what I mean? We've had plenty of tough times and having to start again and again have refocused and like having a better strategy and structure. And that's one word that I will use a lot, structure. You gotta know what you're doing and where you wanna go. Because if you don't get that right, you're all over the place, you know what I mean? And I have been in times, because again, trying to play football and trying to run a business is so difficult and very, very difficult. And, and sometimes like it doesn't make sense and you will have troubled times. It's making sure that it's all done for the right reasons. Like at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. That's what trying to do and how to put it together, making sure that your business makes sense. Fresh Ego FC um, is our give back to the community. We have three boxes, racism in football, mental health in football, and life after football. And we have key players, people like Marvin Sordell, who retired from football because of his, his mental health and he's done the best thing for him. Um, myself, that's living life after football. And also stuff like obviously racism in football that players have gone through by, by playing the game and, and, and that's all. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.